I wanted to measure the voltage across a charged capacitor. And naturally, when you want to measure voltage, you use a voltmeter. But I quickly discovered that these little ceramic capacitors I'm using, even if you charge them to a high voltage, don't actually have that much charge on them. So even at 32 volts, with a 1 mega ohm input impedance voltage meter, meaning only 32 microamps of current at the full 32 volts, the thing was losing like 4 and 5 volts a second at the beginning. Just not that many electrons in there. So I needed to figure out another way to measure this voltage, a stupidly high impedance method. And that means either crazy Darlington configurations of BJTs or MOSFETs to buffer the signal. Well, conveniently, there's something called an op amp. So with that one single component stuck in your breadboard, you're able to enhance the input impedance of your probe to be able to measure any voltage without disturbing it, at least not very much. Fun fact, this is how DRAM works. I'll get to that in a future video. It's absurdly simple. Whatever your input signal, of course reference to circuit ground, let's just do a single power supply, single-sided supply here. Just grab yourself an op amp, toss it in the non-inverting, connect up your standard unity gain configuration. We don't have to worry about oscillation or anything. This is not for measuring a live signal. This is just for measuring a steady signal. So you wouldn't do this with an oscilloscope probe, but you can do it with a multimeter just fine. Because a multimeter is only going to measure every one to two seconds anyway, or at least give you a reading that often. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Just throw an op amp in there. It'll feed back itself and it'll buffer the input. The amount of current drawn from the input will go down to very close to zero, nano amps most likely, and then the buffer is feeding the voltmeter and can take however much it wants. This is how I was able to successfully measure the voltage of a capacitor. And like I said, it's DRAM. So there are, of course, many downsides to this because you might have been wondering, well, why don't multimeters do this in the first place? Well, first of all, the cost. It takes more board space, more engineering, more parts. It's not not perfect, it does add issues to be solved, such as latency. Passing the signal through a buffer is going to increase the delay between input and output. Now, a multimeter is pretty slow already, but this will still make it a little bit worse. Also, it would require the multimeter to be supplied with a voltage as high or higher than the voltage being measured because it has to feed the op amp. It has to feed the amplifier in there. My voltmeter can measure hundreds of volts and it's got a 9 volt battery in there. But here you would need to either somehow multiply the voltage inside the voltmeter, which would drain the battery crazy fast, or you'd need to supply it from the wall. Also, the op amp I'm using has headroom problems. It's made with BJTs, so you actually can't go all the way to the high rail. If you had an op amp based on MOSFETs, then you could, or at least almost get there, but still it's an issue. Also, you can only measure voltages that this chip can handle, that the op amp can handle, so you wouldn't really be measuring hundreds of volts anyway, even if you had the supply. And this setup here cannot measure a negative voltage on a voltmeter. It's useful to see negative because you know it's going the other way. Now, you could put a two-sided supply on here. You could somehow apply positive and negative voltage so that the circuit ground is halfway on the op amp, and that would allow you to measure negative voltage but now it's getting even worse, isn't it? It's getting more complex. And finally, every step through the process adds inaccuracy. Measurement errors, errors due to construction. No component is perfect, so passing it through an op amp is going to reduce both the accuracy and precision of your result. Probably not enough to actually notice, but it would. So this is a breadboard solution. This is not for a commercial device. But I've already found it vital once. The video I did on measuring unknown capacitance would have been impossible without something like this to actually measure the capacitor. Or at least it would have been really hard. So this is good. I mean, you might have seen me put this on the board and gone, well, no kidding, Sherlock. Listen, sometimes the most obvious thing is not that obvious. So just keep this in your brain. Keep this in your brain that sometimes you'll need to measure a voltage incredibly gently. You don't want to disturb the circuit at all. Not even a mega ohm. That's way too much. You can just do this. So you can just throw this idea in your toolbox to be brought out if you happen to need it. And I will be seeing you.